Hey there, it's Rico. Today I want to dive into a crucial topic that affects every workplace, leadership and its impact on our team's vibe. You see, leaders play a massive role in shaping how our teams interact. Without solid leadership, it's pretty hard to create that harmonious, trusting environment we all crave. On the flip side, when a team feels fragmented and filled with negativity, it's often a reflection of what the leadership either encourages or allows to happen. So if you find yourself at the helm of a team that's seen better days, whether you've been in charge for ages or you're just getting started, it's time to roll up your sleeves and figure out what's going on. Let's break it down into simpler terms. Here are four common issues that might be hiding in plain sight. One, are we matching the right people with the right roles? Trust is important, right? But it's not just about trusting that your team members will do their job. It's about making sure that everyone on your team is good at what they do and that their roles match their skills. Toxic teams often have folks who aren't quite hitting the mark. So how do we fix this? Well, it might mean some of your team members needing extra training or change in responsibilities. You've gotta be ready to give them an honest appraisal and hold them accountable for getting better. Sometimes just shifting some responsibilities around can make all the difference. And when we get this right, trust among team members tends to naturally improve. Two, got any bad apples on your team? No, I'm not talking about the fruit. I'm talking about folks who aren't exactly team players. You might have someone on your team who loves to take credit for the good stuff and points fingers at others when things go south. These are what we call narcissists. They might seem like shining stars at first because they're always showcasing their achievements. But in the long run, they can sap the motivation out of an entire team because they don't appreciate their colleagues' efforts. We gotta work with these folks, help them to see the value of playing nicely with others, and if necessary, consider moving them off the team if they don't get on board. You might also run into team members who display some less than ideal behaviors. That could range from showing prejudices to engaging in inappropriate actions like sexual harassment or even yelling at colleagues. When you see or hear about these negative interactions, you've got to act quickly. First, let the employee know that the behavior isn't acceptable, then get in touch with your HR business partner to figure out the next steps for documentation and potential removal of that behavior if it doesn't stop. Number three, what are we actually rewarding? Leadership isn't just about what you say. It's also about what you do and what you give kudos to. Often when teams aren't getting along, there's a disconnect between what you're telling your team and what's happening in reality. For instance, you might be encouraging your team to speak up with critical feedback on strategic decisions, but if no one ever raises a concern in meetings, it sends a signal that criticism isn't really welcome. People are also paying attention to who gets praised, who gets promotions, and who gets those sweet opportunities. If you consistently brush off criticism or only promote those who agree with you, you're basically sending a message that contradicts what you're asking for. In a nutshell, if you're not seeing the behavior you want from your team, there's a good chance that you're inadvertently rewarding something else. Leadership is all about aligning your actions with your words and making sure you're rewarding the behaviors you actually want to see. And lastly, number four, are we fostering open communication? Communication is the glue that holds teams together. If team members aren't talking, sharing ideas, and addressing concerns, it can lead to misunderstandings and a lack of unity. So ask yourself, are we creating an environment where team members feel comfortable speaking up? Are we actively encouraging discussions and providing a platform for voices to be heard? One way to promote open communication is by leading by example. Share your thoughts and concerns openly and demonstrate that feedback is not only welcome, but valued. Encourage team members to express their opinions and actively listen to what they have to say. By fostering open communication, you're laying the foundation for a more cohesive and connected team. Let's always remember that leadership is an ongoing journey, not a destination. Our mission is crystal clear. We're here to cultivate healthier work cultures and champion the work-life balance we all deserve. By addressing these four key questions, we're not just taking steps, we're taking strides to a more positive and productive workplace. It all boils down to one fundamental principle, putting people first and nurturing that emotional connection. Together, we can bid farewell to toxic work cultures and stand as champions of engaged, productive employees. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for spending this time with me today. Take care, and I'll see you next time.